Hello, it's Chino here. If you like aggressive openings, you're in the right place. Today, I'd like to examine a game in the Yugoslav attack against the Dragon Sicilian and between Stockfish and Alpha Zero in 2018. This game is available on DeepMind's website and the two engines stockfish 8 and alpha 0 follow book moves up until move 13 okay so the game started e4 c5 introducing the sicilian knight f3 d6 d4 all standard opening moves in the open sicilian pawn takes d4 knight takes d4 knight to f6 knight to c3 Defending the pawn, g6, bishop to e3, bishop to g7, introducing the dragon Sicilian. It's worth noting here, mistake for black would be knight to g4, threatening the bishop on e3, but this would lose after bishop to b5 check. Bishop to d7 will be met by queen takes g4. The point being bishop takes g g4 is impossible because of the pin on the a4 to e8 diagonal. And so yeah, and back to the position after bishop to e3. So instead of this knight g4, which we've just looked at, and um, black would usually play bishop to g7. And now f3 and the idea of this move is to play queen d2 and queen to d2 on the next move without allowing black the possibility of playing knight to g4 so here black castles king side standard opening and moves queen to d2 knight to c6 and now we reach an important point in where White has a couple of alternatives, so g4 is also is possible in this position. Castle's queen side is also possible, although this allows black some strong counterplay after pawn to d5. Um, but the move we will be examining um, after um, our position with knight to c6, instead of castle's queen side, or pawn to g4 the move we'll be looking at is bishop to c4 and this is also my preference when playing against the dragon sicilian okay so black continues bishop to d7 a, a developing move and um, white castles queen side and here we find a position where the black and white players have castled on opposite sides of the board and white would typically continue with the king side pawn storm while black would counter with an attack on the queen side and so black played rook to c8 the immediate threat is a discovered attack on the bishop if the knight on c6 moves white simply played bishop to b3 and now black continue knight to e5 an important alternative for black instead of knight to e5 so if we just go back and move would have been knight takes d4 because after bishop takes um, d4 b5 would start immediate counterplay anyways going back to um, the game so after rook to c8 Bishop to b3 coming out of the discovered attack and knight to e5. White continued with the standard attacking idea with pawn to h4. Now in this position, um, black sometimes plays h5 and I think this is an important alternative to what was played in the game. Because um, h5 slows down white's kingside expansion. Mm. However, going back to the game, after the position, after pawn to h4, and black instead continued knight to c4, and threatening the queen on d2, white captured, and pawn takes c4, rook takes c4, 
and now G4 um, shows white's intent and um, the idea is to play H5 on the next move. Black started some counterplay on the king side, on the queen side, sorry, with B5. And white played a move which is typical in this position, king to B1. Um, but just before we look at that, we'll just see, well, why couldn't white capture the pawn on, on B5? So the idea of the B5 move was if knight D takes B5, for example, Queen to a5, threatening to win a material on b5. Knight back to d4. Rook f to c8 would be a strong um, threat. Well, would introduce a strong threat of rook takes c3, which is a recurring team in a Yugoslav attack. Um, if knight b3 here, for example, queen a6, um, just taking time to put the queen on a safe square would still maintain that threat. So, for example, something like h5 would be met by rook takes c3. And if b takes c3, black even has the luxury of playing knight takes e4. And if pawn takes e4, bishop takes c3 with a winning attack, the idea being queen to a3 is threatened next and um, with mate on b2 to follow so this is one reason why black didn't capture the pawn on b5 so if we just go back to the position after um pawn to b5 white carefully play king to b1 and here black continued with a counter attack and um, b4 and after knight c to e2 Queen a5, white played h5, and game continued rook f to c8. Now white took time from his attacking play and played rook to c1. The idea being to protect the c2 square so that the knight on d4 is free to move um, at some point. Um, but anyways, rook 4 to c7. And was played and now bishop to h6 now black would usually um avoid the trade um of the um, bishop and um, because any trade of that black bishop would weaken the squares around the black king and after this move white played bishop to g5 but here black simply played bishop to a4 attacking the c to pawn a third time. White decided not to continue with any play on the queen side, but instead to play the waiting move bishop to e3. And black tried queen to a6. And do no obvious targets just yet. And here it was time to chase the bishop from a4, the annoying bishop from a4 with b3. After b3, bishop went back to b5, and now we saw knight g3 bringing another piece to take part in the attack on the king side. e6 followed, but then white played knight takes b5, and after queen takes b5, bishop d4 was an important move, trying to control the black squares around the white um, king. Um, a5 was played with a potential um, pawn to a4 on the next move. But then after knight to e2, a4, white played h takes g6, opening the h file. And after pawn takes g6, g5, and um, chase the knight back to knight d7. Now this move allowed a pretty combination with rook takes h7, the point being that if king takes h7, rook h1 check, 
King G8, Rook takes H8, check, would win. And um, if we go back a couple of moves after G5, instead of Knight D7, Black could have tried Knight E8, which would prevent the Rook takes H7 combination because the H7 square would be defended by the Rook on C7. And um, although you could say in this position white would still be better after bishop takes h8 and king takes h8 anyway back to the game continuation after g5 and knight to d7 rook takes h7 black played pawn to e5 it's worth noting here that bishop um, takes d4 would be met by knight takes d4 when black has to spend some time to move the queen um, and white would simply follow with something like rook and c1 to h1 with crushing attack and um, so yeah back to the position after rook takes h7 and um, so black avoided bishop takes um d4 and king takes h7 and instead played e5 but here why played the surprising pawn takes a4 threatening the queen the idea here is queen takes a4 doesn't help because after bishop to b2 and king times h7 surprisingly rook to h1 check king to g7 queen takes g6 would be winning for white Okay, so after pawn takes a4, black instead play queen to c6 and um, to keep an eye on the d6 um, square or the d6 pawn. And here white simply just played rook to h6, threatening rook takes g6 check. Black continued with the seemingly obvious capture of the bishop on d4. But then came rook takes g6, king to f7. Another surprising move, queen to f4 check. It's important to note here that white was able to sacrifice all these pieces because of the court uncoordinated state of the black and pieces in defense of the black king. Now, after queen to f4 check, king takes g6 wasn't possible because of queen to f5 check. And after the forced and only move, king to g7, knight takes d4. And after something like queen to c4, knight to e6. With a winning, a winning attack. Um, so back to the position after, um, I think it was rook takes g6, check, king to f7, queen f4, check. Um, into the king takes g6, black continued king to e7, but then followed queen to f5, and um, threatening to infiltrate on e6, rook f8 and um, followed. So it's worth noting here that um, white's a piece down, but has much so much better um, piece coordination, and the black king is also. A lot more exposed so we'll see what happens here after rook f8 and um, queen e6 check was played king d8 was the only move and now rook to g8 the idea here is that rook takes um, g8 is impossible and um, because after queen and um, takes um, g8 check white would obviously gain material with a still with a crushing you know attack um, so going back to the position after king to d8, rook to g8, black tried queen to a6, attacking the knight on e2, um, but white simply played knight to f4, note here the rook takes f4 is impossible because of the pin on the a rank, sorry, the, and also there's a threat of knight to d5. Uh, next, followed by queen to e7.
And so here, Black tried pawn to d3 to try and free the diagonal for the bishop. But here, White simply just captured um, the pawn on d3. And um, if we take stock for a second, we'll note that Black has an extra piece. So one, two, three, four, five pieces against White. One, two, three, four. But white has extra pawns, one, two, three, four, five, six, against blacks too. So you could say white's up in material, has a safer king. Delta knight takes d3, black tried queen to c4, trying to exchange queens. But then simply rook takes f8 check, knight takes f8, queen takes d6 check. Ben White's gaining even more material. And I mean, taking another look at this position, we see White is a, a minor piece down but has five extra pawns. Knight to f4 and was played and with several threats. I mean, Knight to e6 is one threat already. And the threats are so strong that. Black doesn't even have time for something like queen to um, c3 because even something as simple as knight to e6 check should win after say king to c8, queen takes c7 exchanging pieces um, when these pawns and the rook should be too much um, for black. Okay, so going back to the position after um, knight to d7, and black tried and bishop to e5, with a double threat against the queen and the knight. White calmly played queen to d2, and defending the knight in f4. Black tried queen to c6, but then white started to match the pawn on, on the a file, a5. And after bishop takes f4, queen takes f4, king to c8, queen to f5, king to b8, g6, advancing the other pawn on the king side was, was strong. Um, white went on to win this because the, the two flank pawns um, were just too much for black to deal with. Um, we'll just go through a few more moves quickly. And queen to c3. And trying to cover the g7 square, and uh, but after queen to e6, king to a7, queen to d6, knight to e5, and after queen to b6 check, retreated king to a8, and g7 was played anyway. The idea being rook takes g7, rook h1. Um, with a, a check on h8 blooming, black tried knight to g6, but then after rook to d1, knight to e7 was tried. Rook to d3 was played first. If rook to d8 check was played immediately, knight to c8 would have been a surprisingly effective defense because queen a6 check would simply have been met by king to b8. And both the black king and the black queen defender c8 square. So if we go back to the position after knight to e7, so into the rook to d8 check, and white went rook to d3 first to deflect the queen from defense of the c8 square. Queen e1 check was tried, but then simply king to b2. And after knight to c8, queen to c5. King to b8, rook to b3. White went on to win. So what can we learn from this game? I, keep, I think the key learning point here is the Yugoslav attack is a dangerous variation against the Dragon Sicilian. And if we go back to one of the critical positions um, after the opening, and yeah, the position after White played h4, h5 is probably the most important um, alternative for black because this would slow white expansion on the king side. 
thanks for watching and please subscribe if you'd like to see similar videos in the future.